In the vastness of the sky where planes are soaring birds, the appearance of the Airbus A350 has marked a major turning point in the world aviation industry. Is it for nothing that people say that the A350 is not only a means of transportation, but also a symbol of human creativity and progress? Let's find out in today's episode how good this plane really is. Why are airlines so obsessed with it? Now let's dive in. 70% of the A350 airframe is made of advanced materials, including 53% composites, making it lighter and stronger than previous aircraft designs. Airbus uses something called CFRP, short for Carbon Fiber Reinforced Plastic, which is made from carbon fibers bonded to a resin. It is lighter than aluminum, stronger than steel, and more corrosion resistant than both. CFRP is used for the wings, center box and spars, tail cones, fuselage panels, frames and doors, while titanium is used around the doors, landing gear, engine mounts, and high load frames. All of this makes for a light and fuel efficient aircraft that is much less susceptible to fatigue and corrosion and easier to maintain. The wings, manufactured at Broughton in Wales, are 32 meters long and six meters wide and are the largest single aircraft component made from carbon composites. Speaking of wings, they play a huge role in improving the aerodynamics of the airplane's design. What makes them special is the way they are designed to morph in flight, changing shape for maximum aerodynamic efficiency during different phases of flight. Airbus calls this biomimicry, an innovative design approach that takes cues from nature as birds' wings have evolved over millennia, changing shape to create maximum lift and minimum drag. The wing design includes some other sensible features warning, this gets a little technical, like swept leading edge devices and new adaptive drop hinged flaps, which help improve efficiency at low speeds. To improve efficiency at higher speeds, the A350 XWB can deflect its flaps differently, optimizing the wing shape and providing better load control. Further gains are made through a number of small improvements, such as tweaking the shape of some of the panels, using curved windscreens and low drag engine nacelles. These, along with other small design improvements such as filled flapper on edges, help the wings cut through the air better and reduce noise. The aircraft's engines also contribute greatly to its efficiency. Many might assume that its engines will be more fuel hungry, as the Rolls-Royce Trent XWB that powers the A350 is huge. In fact, it was so big that the fuselage of a Concorde could fit inside one of them. However, the Trent XWB is the latest version of the Trent engine family that first appeared in 1990 and has flown millions of hours in various variants since then. In addition to borrowing from the Trent family's heritage, it also incorporates the latest engine technology for cleaner combustion, better reliability, and lower fuel consumption. The secret to building an efficient jet engine is something called the bypass ratio. The big fan at the front of the jet engine only directs a small amount of the air it sucks into the turbines, where it mixes with fuel and burns. The majority of the air sucked in by those giant fans bypasses the main engine, looping around to the outside and joining the heated, compressed, and burned air at the back of the engine. This gives the plane more thrust, and it works by acting as a blanket around the engine to reduce noise. If you go back in time to the airliners of the 1960s and 1970 Cess, you'll find much narrower engines. They have very low bypass ratios and are therefore noisy, fuel-hungry monsters. Over the years, the size of the first stage fans has increased, as has the bypass ratio to the point where the A350 Trent XW is now a truly gigantic machine, and the bigger the engine, the more efficient and quiet it is. But that's not the only incredible statistic about the engine. At takeoff, each engine sucks in 1.3 tons of air per second, the equivalent of a squash court full of air. The turbine blades inside the engine spin at 12,500 revolutions per minute, with the wingtips reaching speeds of 1,200 revolutions per minute, with the force of nine London buses hanging from each wing. The high bypass and smooth aerodynamics mean that, in addition to being economical, the jet is also the quietest long-haul aircraft in the sky. Apparently, passengers will no longer have to endure the deafening noise of flying. Equally important, the A350 is also incredibly quiet on the outside, which is important for anyone who lives near or works at an airport. 
Airbus has combined design and technology with the efficiency of the Rolls-Royce Trent XWB to create the quietest, most efficient, long-haul, wide body in the skies. That's why the Airbus A350 plays a key role in many airlines' fleet transformation strategies. Thank you so much for watching that far. Please leave a like and subscribe to help us build this channel, and you'll also be the first to see our new content in the future. One year after its introduction, the A350 fleet had accumulated 3,000 flight cycles and around 16,000 block hours. The average daily usage of the first customers was 11.4 hours with an average flight duration of 5.2 hours, which is within the aircraft's capabilities and reflects both the short-haul flights on Qatar Airways and Vietnam Airlines schedules, as well as the crew proficiency training that was common in the early stages of use and was conducted on short-haul flights. Finnair operated the A350 at very high frequencies, 15 flight hours per day to Beijing, 18 hours to Shanghai, and over 20 hours to Bangkok. This may have accelerated the retirement of the Airbus A340. During use, the aircraft's maintenance, repair, and overhaul network required software improvements. Airbus has issued service bulletins regarding onboard equipment and removed kitchen inserts, such as coffee makers and toasters, because of leaks. And to address unexpected overheating warnings in the exhaust system, the company has retrofitted the original connector with a gold-plated connector. By the end of May 2016, the A350 fleet had flown 55,200 hours in 9,400 cycles with a three-month operational reliability of 97.8%. The longest operational route was Qatar Airways Adelaide to Doha at 13.8 hours over 6,120 nautical miles, 11,300 kilometers. 45% of flights were under 3,000 nautical miles, 5,560 kilometers. 16% over 5,000 nautical miles, 9,260 kilometers, and 39% in between. By January 20th, 17, two years after its introduction, 62 aircraft had been put into service with 10 airlines. They had accumulated 25,000 flights over 154,000 hours, with an average daily usage of 12.5 hours, and transported 6 million passengers, with an operational reliability of 98.7%. In 2017, the average number of pre-delivery test flights fell to 4.1 from 12 in 2014, with the average delay falling to 25 days from 68. Its reliability was 97.2% in 2015, 98.3% in 2016, and 98.8% in June 2017, just short of the 99% target for 2017. By June 20th, 17, after 30 months of commercial service, 80 A350s were in service with 12 operators, the largest being Qatar Airways with 17 and 13 at Cathay Pacific and Singapore Airlines. The average fleet stoppage time is 7.2 hours, with 53% under 3,000 nautical miles, 5,560 kilometers, 16% over 5,000 nautical miles, 9,260 kilometers, and 31% in between. Latam Airlines has the longest average flight duration at 10.7 hours, and Asiana has the shortest at 3.8 hours. Singapore Airlines operates the longest flight, from Singapore to San Francisco at 7,340 nautical miles, 13,600 kilometers, and the shortest from Singapore to Kuala Lumpur at 160 nautical miles, 296 kilometers. 184 miles. As of February 2018, 142 A350-900s have been delivered and are in service with a 99.3% operational reliability. As of November 20th, 19, 33 operators had received 331 aircraft from 959 orders and had flown 2.6 million hours. On the 30th of September, 2022, the 500 A350 an A350-900 was delivered to Iberia. As of September 2024, the global A350 fleet of 620 aircraft had completed more than 1,589,000 flights on more than 1,240 routes and carried more than 400 million passengers since entry into service. The fleet had an operational reliability of 99.3% over the last three months. It can be said that this is a good opportunity for it to show its strength.
The operating costs of twin-engine aircraft are much lower than those of four-engine monsters, allowing airlines to optimize revenue. The Superplane Duo A380 and 747 can carry the most passengers, but are only compatible with Code F airports, so they are less maneuverable. They often have to fly to a transit airport and drop passengers to another smaller plane to fly to the destination. That is why they are gradually losing ground and have to give up the game to planes like the A350. Do you think it will be the ruler of the sky in the future? Leave a comment below and thanks for being here.